Hi everyone. Today I want to talk about gratitude being the key to happiness. In the Psalms, Psalm 118 verse 24 to be exact, it says, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If you've woken up this morning, that means that God still has a job for you to do. And so that is most certainly worthy of gratitude and celebration. In the Baltimore Catechism, the very first question is, why did God create you? If you don't know, and many of you old timers will remember the answer, because you had to memorize it verbatim. God created me to know, to love, and to serve him in this life so that I can spend eternity with him in heaven. So God created us to know, to love, and to serve him. So every day that we get out of bed is another opportunity to get it right or to get it better, to know him better through prayer, through his word, to love him better and to serve him better by serving others. Um, you know, some days I struggle with negativity. <laughs> And it helps so much when I verbalize or when I rethink things with an attitude of gratitude. In fact, when I was teaching uh, sixth and seventh grade religion, one of the things that I would have my students do during the entire month of November, instead of just celebrating Thanksgiving the day, is keeping a gratitude journal and every day listing 10 things that happened to them during the day or things that they became aware of that they are very grateful for. And they couldn't list things like, I'm grateful for my mom, I'm grateful for my dog, I'm grateful that I have a roof over my head. It had to be more specific. I'm grateful for my dog because he greets me every day when I come home from school and makes me feel um, happy. Or I'm thankful for my mom that uh, she packed my lunch today and that she shows that she cares for me in this way. I'm grateful for her love, things like that. So, you know, very often one of the first things I do when I get up in the morning after the coffee, of course, is a shower. And while I'm in that shower, I'm always thanking God for the warm, clean water that he has given me. Do you realize there are so many people throughout the world who don't have the luxury of clean water or warm running water to take a shower? What a blessing that is, you know? When I look in the mirror and I'm doing my makeup in the morning, um, one of the things I really don't like about myself is, uh, even more than the wrinkles and the sagging, is the dark circles under my eye. And as I'm trying to paint to cover that, and it's not completely covering that, instead of focusing on the dark circles, I'm saying, God, thank you, thank you for giving me vision so that I can see all the beautiful, beautiful things that you've created, you know, as if they were just for me. Thank you for that. As I'm fixing my hair <laughs> and I'm focusing on these wonderful uh, balding spots or these very thin spots, you know, I've taken vitamins for it and I've done little topical treatments, but let's face it, it's genetic. It's not going to change. Um, I could be very unhappy and very self-conscious about that, but I say, God, 
thank you that I have hair. Thank you that I have hair. People, you know, some people lose their hair very young. Some people are undergoing chemotherapy and they don't have, their hair has fallen out. Um, thank you, God, for giving me hair. Thank you for providing the food on my table today. You know, if I'm struggling with going to work, instead of being like, oh my gosh, it's going to be another one of those days. Lord help me. I hate my job. No. <laughs> um, I had a former principal who would always tell a joke in the morning on the announcements, and she would say, make it a great day. When you go into your work, whether it be at home or whether it be in a place of business, ask the Lord, you know, use me as a light to my coworkers today. Um, let your light shine through me. And if it is a rough day, then use it as a prayer. Lord, I offer up all of the struggles and the hard work and the suffering of this day for the salvation of souls or for a special intention. And I'm telling you, when you offer it up, it really lightens the burden. Something else connected with gratitude is divine providence. We believe the Bible tells us that every good and perfect gift comes from above. Let me see if I can read that to you. This is from James chapter 1 verse 17. Every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. God provides every good gift that we have. We don't get our paycheck from our boss. God provided that job to us. We said yes. God provides for our families. He provides for those who love him. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. So, you know, when you go to the grocery, um, and you're putting all those things in your buggy, it's not what you did. It's God providing. So, you know, whenever we go to the grocery and we're unloading all those bags and making all the trips back and forth from the car to the kitchen to the car to the kitchen, um, you'll often hear one of us in the family say, thank you, God, for, you know, we eat well for another week. We eat well for another week. When my kids were little, we used to watch a lot of Veggie Tales, and one of our favorite episodes was uh, the one about Gideon. And in that episode, they introduce us to a real life person. Uh, his name was George Mueller, and he lived in Bristol, England, and he ran an orphanage out of his home. And he only took donations. I can see that I'm lagging. I hate that. Anyway, um, when they would run low on food, they would sit around the table and they would sing praises to God and thank him in advance, in advance for what God was going to supply. That's how you live with an expectant faith and a grateful heart. God loves a grateful heart, and a grateful heart will make you a much happier person. I'm going to conclude right now because of the nasty lagging. I'm sorry about that. All those wonderful expressions on my face being captured. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, that's what you get for living out in the boonies. Uh, let us close with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord Jesus, we place all our trust in you. Thank you for all that you've given us. 
help us to remember that you provide for our every need and that we can do nothing without you. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.